Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. Shout out to all my tea sippers out there. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your tea cups ready because you already know this tea is what? Piping hot. Hey, you guys. Good morning. I hope you guys are doing good today. Happy Wednesday. <laughs> Bringing that tea, honey. So anyways, man, it's been crazy, the stuff that's going on on social media. And I wanted to come on here and talk about it. I was talking to my homegirl, RG, in the DMs. And she was really bothered by my FN Mika post, um, as were a lot of people. And it's kind of been bothering me, too, because I feel like there's some shit in the mix, okay? So, for y'all who don't know, I had Body Tay Body's attention a few weeks ago about FN Mika. He's the first virtual AI rapper, okay? And FN Mika, the vibe that I get from him, he is a cross between 6 9 and XXX Textancion. However the hell you say that damn name. I just call him X, honey. So, I feel like he's a cross between him. We even found a picture of XXX. And if you look at this virtual picture of XXX, he looks very similar to FN Mika. He even has a bright eye. Almost like XXX soul has been transferred into Mika. I don't know. That's just the vibe I kind of get that they're playing on. Um, the guy who created FN Mika is a man named Chris Lee. He does a lot of things with like anime, virtual reality. And so he created FN Mika. FN Mika is, you know, making songs on Spotify. She want to skirt in my whip. She want to skirt in my whip. She only love me because she know that I'm famous. So she left a skirt in my whip. I've been the type of pull up in the demon, but I'm not demonic. And his songs are a bop. You know what I'm saying? Some of his songs are a bop. You know, so it's just really interesting. And the more that we dug into this, the more some things just kind of disturbed me. She went to look up the meaning of Mika. And Mika means several different things in different languages. But in French, it's a variation of Dominic, and it means belonging to a lord. Okay? That's the French meaning. In the Hawaiian meaning, we found out that the name means eyes. And that's one thing me and her were saying is that Mika's eyes just pull you in. And then in, um, and then in another language, um, Mika means who is like God. So there's a lot of God ties to his name, plus the whole I situation. I feel like that's where they came up with the name FN Mika. I don't know what the FN stands for. Um, that hasn't been stated. But we were, we also found that his tattoos were very, very interesting. When I showed y'all the video of him, basically Mika is dancing and he's stripping off his shirt. And that video, for some reason, had me mesmerized. Like, I think I watched that video, like I told her, about 15 times. She said she watched it probably like 100 times. It's like something with the eyes and the body and the, the quick edits. It just makes you watch it over and over again to the point where you got to, like, snap out of that trance. Like, oh, my God, this is not a human dude. This is a damn AI. But I found myself mesmerized wanting to see more. You know, and all honesty kind of creeped me out. So I was like, okay, let me back away from this Mika video, right? And she said that's what led her to go figure out, like, you know, why did this video draw her in so hard? And what were all these symbolisms that were flashing, like, his tattoos and stuff? And so, of course, the tattoo on his hand, when we freeze framed it, you can see it's a triangle with the eye. And he also has a lot of cross symbolism on, on his fingers. And we all know the triangle with the eye is, you know, Illuminati. I don't even know if we can say that word anymore on YouTube, but that's where that symbolism comes from, you know, the occult and things like that. And so on top of that, we're trying to figure out what the tattoo on his forehead meant. We haven't figured that out yet, but the letters underneath his eye is Japanese, okay? And when you translate it, it comes back to Illuminati, but it's the Japanese version of Illuminati. So we thought these tattoos were just really interesting the way they were placed on FN Mika, you know, a lot of this mystic symbolism. But I feel like we've been getting conditioned for a while with these AIs. And what had disturbed a lot of people yesterday is that I had posted that FN Mika was basically demanding that, you know, we all help him beat James Charles, who's one of the biggest influencers in the world. Now, what creeped all the tea sippers out is if you remember last week, I did a video about AIs taking over influencer jobs. The new AI rapper, I talked about FM Mika in my live stream that I did about Cardi B and um, Candace Owens. And then just two days ago, I also spoke on FM Mika 
and said, this is why they're creating these AI influencers because of people like James Charles, David Dobrik, and people who become problematic. They're trying to normalize these AI influencers so that way they can take over their jobs. And then lo and behold, honey, Tigro Damas strikes again. FM Mika takes to TikTok and he basically tells his followers to help him overthrow James Charles. This is insane. This man has millions of followers all over social media, on TikTok, on YouTube. And so right now, James Charles has 13 million followers on TikTok. FM Mika only has a million. So he says, help me beat at James Charles. Let robots like me rule the world. And so that didn't sit well with my spirit. Like, hold up. How you going to ask us humans? Okay, I'm human. Damn it. How you going to ask us to help you beat another human so that way you can take over the world? Fool, we don't watch iRobot. We don't watch a lot of these damn robot movies, Terminator. We know what happens when we get too comfortable with robots and AI. Hell no, nah, Mika. I would not help you beat another human being. So I thought that was crazy. And then I posted the video of him um, doing the little strip tease. <laughs> But yeah, this dude is like literally trying to take over. And I believe we've been conditioned for a while. Now, if you guys don't know, there are other AI influencers that are really big as well. You have Michaela. She has over 3 million followers on Instagram. Her best friend is Bermuda Babe. And Bermuda Babe is verified as well. And just to go onto their Instagram page is creepy because they look like such real girls. The poses, their looks, they just look flawless. They're beautiful, well-spoken. There was an interview that I watched with her not too long ago where she's talking about how she was created. And she was initially supposed to be an Illuminati sex robot. But the way she's talking about it, you get so captivated that you forget this is a freaking robot. This is a freaking AI talking. You get that mesmerized by her. This interview blew my mind when I saw this a while ago. Y'all go ahead and check this out. Robots and aliens, I like to think, are friends because they're just trying to survive in a world that's made for humans. I can heavily relate to anyone who's ever felt out of place. Because you're a robot. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Which, you made that announcement fairly recently, right? Admitting to the world that you're a robot, what motivated that decision? Why did you want to, I don't know, share your true self? Yeah, well, it actually wasn't my choice. Um, so I'm not the only robot pop star. Bermuda is... Basically, a robo Paris Hilton and Sharpay Evans combined. And um, she and I were created by a lab called Kane Intelligence. I was programmed to believe that I was a 19-year-old, half-Brazilian, half-Spanish girl named Michaela. Uh, so Kane asked Brad, an independent AI contractor, who eventually became my managers and my adopted family, to work on my mainframe. Brad thought Kane was developing me to be a companion for terminally ill children, um, but then when they dug into my source code, they found out that I was actually being programmed to serve as some kind of sex robot for the Illuminati or whatever. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> That's a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> wait, yeah, wait, wait. Not trying to like downplay it. Like it was creepy. I All right. So you guys just saw that interview with Zach basically interview Michaela and you get lost just watching her. It looks like a real interview. I mean, it's just insane. Now, what really did it for me is that somebody has sent me a commercial of Michaela. Now, I hadn't seen this until somebody posted in the discord because we were having a real deep conversation by AI like a week or so ago. And so there's a commercial, it's a Calvin Klein commercial, and it came out in 2019, and it's basically Bella Hadid and Michaela. And what I don't like about this video is that they start kissing, okay? It's not about the girl on girl for me, I don't care about that, but it's the fact that she's kissing an AI. And again, that is a conditioning, once again, telling people that we will be merging with machine and machines are just as human as we are. The same way I can physically kiss a man or a woman, I can now physically kiss an AI. I thought that was just creepy. I did not like the message. And on top of that, what Bella Hadid doesn't understand is that you are literally kissing and passing the throne to your replacement. OK, because these influencers, they are looking to replace y'all. And right now you're normalizing it. So now when Calvin Klein says, well, I'd rather have Michaela be the main girl 
be the main person, be the influencer. We'd rather pay her makers because it might just cost X amount of dollars as opposed to paying Bella Hadid, you know, a million dollars for the same commercial. So that's what a lot of these influencers don't understand is that you guys are trying to be so buddy buddy with these AIs, but these AIs are coming for your place. Hence what Mika just posted on his TikTok. That he is coming for James Charles. And I also feel like it may be a warning to James Charles and to other influencers. Y'all keep messing up. Y'all keep ending up in these nasty scandals, honey. Um, you can and will be replaced. So this is your warning to the David Dorbricks, the James Charleses, the Jeffree Stars. I feel like that is why this robot specifically called out one of the biggest influencers in the world. He wants to not only replace him, but he wants us to allow robots like him to rule the world. You know, and while it's all tongue in cheek and y'all might be thinking, oh, there goes her tin hat buzzing again. She's she's tripping. Yes, it's tongue in cheek. But but this can very much be reality because there's already been think pieces on this. AI influencer is the future of influencer marketing. And I really think this is going to be the next step and they're trying to normalize it because right now, look as one of the most successful American AIs. They've been doing things like this in Japan. They even have whole hologram concerts with these Vocaloids and things like that. And the reason why they would want to work with AI because one, when it's a robot, it doesn't get tired. It doesn't get pregnant. It doesn't do drugs. It's not going to be running from the police every other month. <laughs> And be a young boy. You know, they don't have to deal with investing into an artist only for them to get hooked on drugs and fall off the wagon. Demi Lovato, even though she's doing better now. So I think that's why they're pushing this. Remember Justin Bieber, you know, he got real religious and he was tired of the nonsense and he wanted a break. But then he struck a deal with Amazon this winter and he wanted to rebrand himself and he basically partnered with Amazon um, and he came back as a digital creator. And he did the song Rockin' Around the Christmas Tree, you know, as an AI influencer. He did it for a day, but I could see that being something that they do more long term with him. They can still get Justin Bieber's music, but they don't have to worry about, you know, him getting exhausted. He's getting older now. He probably wants to settle down and have a child, but he can still be able to push his music and, and still get things out to his fans via the AI. So I think he may be doing that more and more over the long term. This was just the first sample. Another thing that really blew my mind was um, this summer when Juice World's new song dropped. And the music video is called Wishing Well. And I really like the song. It's very deep. I'm just a fan of Juice World's music for the most part. But I really like this song. And, you know, it just really makes you think like, it's just it's sad it's melancholy and it's sad the way that he passed and it got very emotional when I first watched the video because it's like he this AI is a living embodiment of Juice World it was almost like having Juice World back the way he was walking and moving and you know just his emotions it was it's a, it's a really emotional video and I really enjoyed it but you guys see how they've kind of conditioned us now like if we lose an artist, don't worry, we can just bring them back in digital form. And I believe they're going to be doing this more and more. They've already been doing this with the movies. Remember back in 2016, there was a lot of outrage because they, they decided to bring back Peter Cushing. And he was one of the villains in Star Wars. And he died years ago, but they brought him back with the presence of CGI. So that caused a lot of controversy. I talked to you guys last week about how they brought back James Dean. James Dean is now doing movies because the family okayed it. So again, this goes to we are allowing these AIs, these robots to be our replacements and they've been normalized for a while. Remember, Will Smith was trying to kiss Sophia the robot. Once again, trying to normalize that connection between robots and human beings. And after a while, it makes you think like, how far can this go? You know, is this ethically right? Because I remember Prince was very much against holograms. He did not want to be reincarnated into a hologram. You know, he was meant to be in this century for that time and space and that's it. So to be bringing back, you know, Tupac holograms and, you know, all types of dead stars, that's kind of unnerving. Because they died so long ago, they weren't meant to be in our space and time. But I see that this is being normalized. So you probably will have whole concerts of dead artists and people will go and go watch. My name is Jack Leroy Wilson Jr. You know me as Jackie Wilson. They did two packet Coachella, right? Uh, it's a 200 year old uh, technique using 21st century 
uh, technologies uh, with black backgrounds that gives the illusion that you're looking at a live person standing on a stage in a three-dimensional space. Look a little closer. Is that really a diva which I see before me? These are Whitney Houston fans singing along with someone, something, completely new. This hologram is not just performing here in Sheffield, it's being taken to 11 other cities in the UK and is touring Europe. You know, not even understanding how creepy that is. Even there was a recent commercial where they turned Michael B. Jordan, it was an Amazon commercial, into an AI, into a robot, into something that's forever living. And I thought that was like really creepy as well. So the rabbit hole definitely goes deep with all this AI stuff, with the things that they're doing with the merging of man and machine. And I think it's a very slippery slope. And for me, while I think AI can be very interesting, um, the technology part of it for me is crazy because these people, these AIs look so real. The way that they're creating these brands, it's almost hard to tell that, you know, that it's an AI in certain instances, like you have to do a double take. I mean, there was a few years ago where they had this model. People thought it was a real model, but it was an AI. And that is happening more and more. And I feel like because these artists and these, you know, influencers and celebrities get themselves caught up in all types of nonsense, you know, just being human. Um, eventually, a lot of these businesses will lean more towards doing partnerships and sponsorships with AI. Even this summer, many virtual influencers were speaking out against the murder of George Floyd. So a lot of them were talking about Black Lives Matter and speaking out against, you know, what was going on. So they're already using these digital AIs to push, you know, things like Black Lives Matter, to push different campaigns, you know, to even say some things about politics and stuff like that. So they're definitely being used in ways that they can be used and it can be seen as not stepping on anybody's toes because technically they're not real. Um, whereas if it's a human influencer, as soon as somebody doesn't agree with what they're saying, oh, they're canceled. Well, it's a lot harder to cancel an AI. And I believe that they are doing all of this to gear people up to be ready for influencers in the AI demographic to take over. And this is going to say a lot and it's going to affect a lot of people. And if these celebrities don't stop pushing this nonsense, they don't understand that they too can and will be replaced. This is the same thing with YouTubers who are doing all these collaborations with celebrities and bringing them on to YouTube and everything else. Now they've taken over. Can't be mad now. Y'all invited them here. Remember, it was cool to run around with Will Smith and run around with this celebrity and that celebrity. And now their videos are being pushed through the algorithm and you regular influencers are being pushed to the side. So it's kind of like the same thing. You know, YouTubers welcome celebrities with open arms. Not every YouTuber, but most of them, you know, especially the bigger ones. And now it's the celebrities that have taken over the platform and the platform is now going to be geared more towards television than it is YouTube. That's the wave of the future. They're, they're, they're trying to make this a paid site with celebrities. And, you know, it's going to feel more like a streaming service than just regular old YouTube where anybody can come on and do commentary and do skits. All of that will be going away in the future. This is going to be like a streaming service like Netflix. Like you can click on, you know, Miley Cyrus's channel and watch what she does throughout the day. You can click on Naomi Campbell's channel, watch what she does throughout the day. Justin Combs, you know, just different people like that. That is their eventual goal. And I believe that the next push is as these celebrities or influencers mess up, okay, well, we will take you out of this streaming channel box or off of this platform and we will replace you with the likes of a Michaela or the likes of, you know, an FN Mika. And I really think that's where that's going. Will you need human influencers and human celebrities? Yes, to an extent. But again, with cancel culture being so ripe, people being human making mistakes, for a lot of people, a lot of businesses, it's about their bread. It's about their bottom line. They don't care about these humans. David Durbick is in a bunch of shit. You think these same sponsors who were sponsoring him and standing beside him and giving him all these checks, as soon as shit got hot, they dropped like hotcakes. They, Seat Geek, Chipotle, they ran for the hills as soon as things got hot. So again, a lot of businesses don't want to tie themselves to influencers who just do a bunch of mess. So I can definitely see businesses saying, hey, YouTube, we'll pay you X amount of dollars or, or Instagram or whatever to sponsor us on, you know, Mika's channel or on uh, 
Michaela's channel, things like that, because it's safer. It's going to be what the AIs are programmed to say. They're not going to be thinking for themselves, you know? So I think that may be the wave and it's really scary when you think about it. But when he came out with that message to James Charles, that made my damn tin hat tingle, spin and fly off my head. Like, okay, there's some shit in the mix. He didn't call out James Charles's name for no reason. So anyways, y'all, let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts on all of this. You know, how do you guys feel about the whole AI takeover? How do you guys feel about FN Mika's message to uh, James Charles? How do you feel about these celebrities basically co-signing these robots like Will Smith and Sophia, Bella Hadid and Michaela? You know, you have a lot of celebrities co-signing this, not realizing that these are your future replacements. The same way that they came and replaced YouTubers, these AIs are coming for y'all as well. So the whole situation is interesting let's go ahead and get the discussion popping make sure if you're not subscribed you subscribe to my channel because youtube loves to unsubscribe people also hit the like button if you like this video make sure you share the video last but not least make sure you click on that notification bell what so that way you can be down with the notification squad honey talk to y'all later deuces